After Michael Jackson's tragic and untimely death under mysterious circumstances, the world was in shock. What really happened? Was it suicide? But surely not when he was so close to his big comeback. And his film, This Is It, would indicate that he was ready for that. Or was it a tragic accident, an accidental overdose, as with Heath Ledger? Or was it an accidental overdose by his doctor, Dr. Murray, in which case it would be manslaughter? Or was it, as some of his family were claiming, murder? But why? After his death, Michael Jackson, the king of pop, became even more famous and legendary, like Marilyn Monroe and Princess Diana before him. Everyone wanted to know everything about him, not just about his death, but about his extraordinary life, not just about his professional life, but about his private life. Tonight, we have a psychic and medium here, Valentin Borisov and he is going to try to reach Michael through a sales. Valentin didn't know very much about Michael Jackson before his death, but at the time of his passing, he suddenly felt a very strong connection to him, and he feels very strongly that Michael wants to use him as a conduit. We've gathered together a small group of people who are Michael Jackson's supporters and fans. Christo, Virginia, Charlotte, Wendy, and Sally Ann. And we all hope very much that Michael's spirit will come to us tonight. We're in a restaurant called Utopia, which used to be Sellers, <laughs> and it's a bit creepy. I've never attended a seance before, and I don't think any of the others have. It's very scary, but very exciting. Let's do it. Hello, Valentin. Hello, Sally. How are you feeling? I feel uh, that I'm tuning into Michael tonight, but I felt very strongly in the hours and in the few days after he had passed away that he wanted to connect with me and he wanted to use me as a medium. I have been a medium since I was a child. I was aware of it since I was five, six, seven years old, and this is how it started me hearing the voices of people who had passed on. And I felt that Michael wanted to to channel, wanted me to channel some messages. That he was able spontaneously, occasionally, to do astral projection, he's telling us. That he was able to disconnect his spirit from his physical body particularly when he was very relaxed and he was able to travel outside uh -huh. the body, so... Up the silver cord. <laughs> yeah, so, but this time it was for real and uh, his spirit was shocked, so he was in shock f for a month after the event. Um, he had been able to hear voices himself, he says, whilst he was alive, or to see images of departed people um, in his dream world or when he was asleep. There's been a lot of press reports since his death about a friend of his called Mark Lester who played, uh, I think he was in Oliver years ago, I think he was Oliver in the film yeah, Oliver, Oliver yeah. and they were reportedly friends for many years and he's claimed since then, since Michael's death, that he is actually the biological father of Paris uh, Michael's daughter, is that is that true? Can he shed any light on that? He's saying, with, uh, he makes me smile a little bit because he's saying, never believe the press. <laughs> <laughs> never believe everything you read. <clears throat> Some of it is true. On, uh, in this case, there is no truth to it. He's saying, <clears throat> they're all my children. They're all my children and I love them and I'm their father. Also Marilyn Monroe, he, he feels very close to her and he has met up with her and she has been the one <coughs> to comfort him initially. Actually when he entered the new dimension, she was holding his hand and she was his spirit gu guide into uh, the new world. So, so she, she initiated him 
he says uh, that he would love his children to meet uh, Prince William, Prince Harry, and they will get on very well <laughs> because he's getting on so well with uh, their mother. Let's hope that can be. And also, he is saying that uh, one person who has helped him since uh, he died, actually spiritually, which uh, has comforted him a lot, is Mother Teresa of Calcutta. Actually, she is like a mentor there. Uh, she's explaining to him because he couldn't grasp um, those spiritual processes in the sense that he has to pass through all those layers of the new reality. And then she was explaining to him, this level means such and such a thing. And he can't reveal to us because we are alive, so we are not allowed. The living people are not allowed to know some of the uh, secret uh, rules and regulations of the afterlife. So and definitely he would like to refute all those allegations about children. Uh, definitely, uh, he says, I had many sins, but uh, nothing to do with children. As a matter of fact, I loved children, he's saying, and I, I would have done a lot for children if I had stayed alive. So, so he's saying, definitely, uh, he feels completely innocent uh, with regards to children. And I, he would like to actually complain that he was treated very badly. Uh, by the press because they were propagating some unsubstantiated legal allegations and presenting them as facts and uh, he says eventually he was uh, nothing he was proven not to be guilty <coughs> he adores Liz Taylor and he just his message is just be careful with uh, the medication you are taking don't take too much just take the minimum how does he feel about Martin Bashir? Has he forgiven him as well as everybody else in his life? More difficult to forgive him. <laughs> so would he say that the, the Arviso case was probably the most stressful thing that ever happened to him in his life, that, that court case? Yeah, the court case, yeah. The court case and actually the first hour of death. That was shocking, yeah, the first hour of death. Because he wasn't a, prepared. Because, yeah, he somewhere. wasn't prepared and in a way uh, his spirit was forced out of his body, physical body, against his will because of this uh, uh, awful uh, combination of medications and he, he did feel pretty awful. But he was uh, uh, about to compose more songs, I mean, uh, what a pity, he says that uh, his lifespan was interrupted. But he would love to choose a composer now in North America. And he is uh, spiritually interviewing without them knowing a few. He's observing the work of a few and he is going to announce, he's going to find ways to announcing who that uh, musician is uh, when he has made his final choice in the next few months. And maybe he's going to use either other mediums uh, or this musician will go to the press and speak about it him, himself. It's a male musician he's considering. And I, as a medium tonight, 100%, I believe in what he said. I don't believe for a second that he could have molested children. No. Um, he, rather, I feel that he felt himself like a child, childlike. Yes. Did you feel he was a very gentle person? Very gentle, very gentle, because sometimes you channel as a medium some uh, spirits and then they can be a little bit harsh or they can have heavy energy. I feel that Michael uh, had tonight using me very gentle energy, very, very gentle. And when he was speaking to you, did, did you hear his voice was a very soft voice? Very soft voice, almost like a whispering in my ears. Just like he was in real life. Very soft, uh, not intimidating in any way. Uh, very relaxed voice, very nice mm -hmm. accent mm -hmm. in which he spoke.